Good day, YouTube. 1MJ here, and welcome back. All right. Things are still a little bit choppy, sort of all over the place. It's Thursday morning here in Australia. It's obviously sort of Wednesday night uh, over in the States. And look, the market is up a little bit, but again, it was down yesterday. So really, you know, these charts kind of show it all. You know, some things, you know, get a little bit of a pump, particularly Dogecoin. But really, it's a lot of just sort of sideways action. You know, it's up, it's down, and it's all over the place. And for me, I just feel like that's how it's going to be for a while. Again, I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. You know, I definitely don't claim to sort of know it all, but I get the feeling like we're just going to chop around for a while. It's going to be a lot of sideways movement. There's going to be fake outs to the upside, possibly fake outs to the downside, but it's it feels like this is just going to be an accumulation phase. And how long that's going to last, whether it's, you know, weeks or months, well, I guess that's kind of the million dollar question, isn't it? But for me, I just continue to dollar cost average. And again, it's really in the big plays if we go down, if we sort of chop sideways uh, and it's just not really sort of going anywhere. Again, say we range between, you know, $42,000 and, you know, maybe sort of $32,000 over the next few weeks, months. Uh, I'm happy to kind of you know, buy some altcoins, but mainly I'm just going to be focusing on the large caps until we get a move sort of uh, to the upside a little bit. Again, I think there's going to be fake outs. I wouldn't be surprised if you see this get up to 42, maybe, maybe 45,000. Then we have a big massive swing and it comes all the way back down to, you know, maybe 30,000 or something like that. But if that happens, that could change uh, things as opposed to, you know, maybe this was the peak of this kind of bull cycle, not the bull market. Again, maybe it becomes a little bit more like 2013 and 14 uh, and things like that. We'll have to wait and see. No one really knows. But again, I don't have any problems if we travel sideways for a number of months. If we traveled sideways until the end of the year, that would just mean that a really big base has been built and that means it would push even higher again. You know, the, the tops of, you know, maybe sort of two, 300,000, if we traveled sideways for another six months, that would, I think, totally kind of invalidate that and then mean we could go even higher. But again, who knows? Let's move on. All right, Bitcoin dominance dropped a little bit, so down around 40%, uh, and Ethereum dominance uh, has dropped a little bit as well. It was around 18%, now it's just under it. And Gwei price is still pretty low considering 27. So maybe all those layer two solutions are finally starting to work. Things like Polygon, Arbitrum, Optimism, and things like that have freed up again. There's not a lot happening in the moment. It's indecision time. So that's why the gas prices are so cheap. We won't really know how much they have affected until we get on the next leg up when things get really super exciting again. If these gas prices stay low, awesome. Then I guess it's worked. If not, well, then I guess it hasn't worked. All right, let's have a look. What's done really well in the last 24 hours? Because we can see, look, Binance Coin's done well. Dogecoin, you know, with the Coinbase uh, Pro listing, that's probably had something to do with it. So what's done really well in the last 24 hours? All right, Kasama, nice. OKB, Pirate Chain, Algorand, Phantom, Pirate Chain, far out. I don't know what's going on there. Polkadot, IOTA, Dogecoin, Binance. Look, there's a number of really good movers right there. You know, 20% plus, 15% plus. Again, any gain's a good gain, don't get me wrong. But really for crypto, if it's less than 15%, uh, gain in 24 hours then it's just you know it's okay again happy with any kind of gain but I just think anything 15% plus in 24 hours is what we call good gains we can see a few have had that all right what about losses though what's been hit the hardest what hasn't done so well it's a safe moon not doing so well but a really kind of minor loss uh, and internet computer again and then you're just onto your sort of stable coins so hardly any losses in the top 100 whatsoever and that would uh, you know stand to reason considering we've moved up 4.2 percent but that's up 4.2 percent from the eight percent we'd lost in the 24 hours before so again you look at the seven days things are still kind of really choppy and all over the place all right let's go and move on there's a, a lot sort of happening in the moment I'll start with this fear and greed index still in sort of extreme fear and again if the market just kind of stays around here for a while the bigger the base uh, you know the higher it's likely going to launch off that so I really 
I am quite okay if the broader crypto markets just travel sideways uh, in general. Again, I think there's going to be some fake outs to the upside and fake outs to the downside. But if things just kind of travel sideways for a number of weeks, even a number of months, you know, maybe sort of into, you know, July, August, no problems with that. It's, you know, again, the downside that everyone's really worried about. And that goes to show with the extreme fear. But what I think might happen is this pumps up a little bit. And that's where we're going to get the fake out to the upside and everyone starts to pile in. Yes. And then we have another big kind of I don't know if it'll be catastrophic drop in comparison to what we've already done, but I wouldn't be surprised if we came back down to sort of 30,000, you know, thereabouts after getting up to like 42, 45,000, something like that wouldn't surprise me, but, you know, we'll have to wait and see. All right, so let's go over to the Bitcoin market. This is what we're looking at the moment. So again, this is the channel that we've been in for a really, really long time. And look, we've never seen these break to the downside except for periods after they've broken above to the upside so we can see it's broken above to the upside and if I can go find some sort of markets I'll show you what I mean as you can see this broke to the upside and then this would have been a new channel there and then we got some uh, down downward sort of pressure but it was really choppy there but another example is sort of here hopefully you can see here this broke to the upside and then it broke to the downside. And so what was this? June 17 to July 17. So for a month it had downside. But then it started going up. So it wasn't the end of the bull run. It was just kind of the, you know, the end of the bull cycle for a period there. So a retracement and a month long retracement. That's a pretty long sort of retracement. So these kind of things definitely happen. So again, we're going to go back. This is going to load slow. That's right. Anyway, oh, here we go. Again, we can see the same thing has sort of happened here. We're in this bull trend. Now, it's not showing up at the moment, but it broke to the upside. But then we had this consolidation period again. So uh, April all the way through to July. So that's months and months. And again, this is that 2013-2014 uh, cycle. So we could see something like that. And it doesn't mean the bull runs over, but it just means we go into a bearish sort of cycle in a broader kind of bull run. So again, as you can see, it wasn't anywhere near done, but it broke to the upside and then it had these big massive swings. And again, the fake out that I'm talking about and then breaks down again and then a bit of a fake out again and then breaks down again. But it's not the bull run that's over. It's just a bearish cycle within a bull run. And then again, we got back in the channel and then it had that last kind of final peak. So that is definitely what I could sort of see coming. Uh, that would not surprise me at all. And that's really what I'm looking for. So if we break to the downside here, it's not that I think the bull run is over. It's just that I think we could go into a sort of bearish uh, type cycle where again, we sort of travel sideways for a while and we have a bit of a fake out. So again, get up to this 40 something K range, everyone gets super excited and then boom, we come back down and again, maybe sit around sort of 27 sort of thousand dollars and then we quickly get back up into this range and we just travel sideways for a while. And I'm not saying it's gonna last until October, but maybe that's what it is. It'll basically be very similar to this but on the inverse, so it'll be upside down. So again, you'll have these, you know, big uh, pumps to the upside and then to the downside, and then we sort of gonna just travel sideways. And this will be the average range, and we'll have pump outs again, uh, fake outs to the upside and downside. And that will just tell me that it really is a very big accumulation phase that, you know, you rarely have accumulation phases that lead to the downside unless some kind of black swan event happens. Because like this, this is an accumulation phase here. And really it was the, you know, the pandemic that made this happen here. This otherwise, this should have just been accumulation and then it started to do this anyway without this. So a black swan event definitely sort of could happen. But otherwise, if we just do a lot of sideways traveling for a while, that to me says again, it's this inverse the other way around. It's just more accumulation and that will have meant months of accumulation basically since January because this is still accumulation just with a lot of market manipulation play happening. And then this can push out to, you know, July, August, September, somewhere around about here. 
Again, with the average price being kind of somewhere in and about here before then we rock it to the upside. That's what I'm looking for. All right, moving on. So that's my chart analysis. Lots of interesting stories. So search giant Google has lifted its 2018 ban on crypto uh, exchange wallet advertisements. So there was almost no crypto sort of uh, advertisements you could find on Google. I mean, there were a few here and there, but none of the wallets and things like that. But now they've lifted that ban. Is this a sign that the times are changing? You know, Google has uh, hooked up with Polygon, you know, in their database. We brought that story the other day. Now it looks like, you know, there's, uh, what is it, Coinbase getting their card on Apple Pay. You know, things are just starting to happen. And again, nothing too crazy. There's still fear in the market, but we've still got all of these things going on. And it just makes me think that this will be an accumulation phase. And I put out a tweet before, I'm more than happy for this to accumulate for like another six months. I don't think it'll accumulate for another six months with just choppy sideways action. Uh, again, the longer that happens, the more I can accumulate and then the more I can take advantage of when it finally does go up. And again, as I've said, if it goes down, then I really just focus on the big plays and I'll just leave my altcoin uh, plays because I still like all of the altcoin plays I have. It's just they're going to get um, you know hit in the market. I still think most of those, if not you know hopefully all of them, will be around until the next upside. And again, I am hoping that we've bottomed out. But moving on, really, really good news uh, that Google is finally lifting those bans. Now, Polygon and AU, AU21 Capital unveil a $21 million fund to support Polygon developers. So again, now there's grants and things for new companies you know, coming to the crypto space to build on Polygon. So again, a lot of people were worried that when ETH 2.0 comes out, it means all of a sudden Polygon's got no use. Negative. Polygon will sort of always have a use as long as they stay relevant and continue to develop and you know get people to come across. Because once ETH 2.0 comes out, all the programs and platforms that are on Polygon don't then just jump ship and go to uh, ETH because ETH can't do it all. ETH itself, it can't scale large enough if it gets worldwide mass adoption. It needs side chains and things, and that's exactly what Polygon is. It's exactly what optimism is going to be. It's exactly what you know Arbitrum and things like that are gonna be. It needs those to scale worldwide. ETH 2.0 itself can't do it alone. So Polygon's not going anywhere, and it seems that they're, again, offering grants. So the joint venture fund is intended to provide funding, developmental support, and exchange listings to up-and-coming Polygon ecosystems. So obviously, you know, there's going to be a lot of development, you know, unfortunately a lot of shit coins, but just a lot of development in the crypto space over the next few weeks to months until we go into the next bear cycle, whenever that may be. Then it all sort of dies down. But until then... If Polygon can, you know, get more people building onto their project and particularly good ones that are going to make it through the next bear market and aren't just here for a cash grab, then again, it just helps grow the space. So more good news for Polygon. I, I couldn't be more bullish on Polygon, at least in the, look, in the long term, actually. But again, you just have to understand the cycles. Polygon, let's say it gets to $5, and I'm not saying it will. In the bear market, there's every chance it drops down to under a dollar. That is just the cold, hard facts of it. Well, not the facts because we don't know, but that's generally what's happened in previous uh, times. So again, getting in at, you know, what is it, eighty now, $2 or something? Let's have a look. Where's Polygon at? Uh, Polygon. So yeah, $1.80. So again, you know, in the sort of, you know, Mid-term, you might lose some money, but in the long term, I think Polygon's here to stay. I think it's a really good project. They're really, really innovative. They've built such a, uh, a good sort of customer base and support base, a lot of projects on there. I think it's a solid project, but that's not financial advice. I can't offer you that. That's just my personal opinion. All right, again, more reasons to make me think that, you know, we're nowhere near the end of this cycle. Sideways action is great action. That is the best time to get in. You can accumulate for as long as that's going to, you know, sort of occur. And then when it starts to run, you know, whether you want to keep uh, accumulating uh, when it's starting to run or not is your call. Generally for me, again, buy when there's blood on the streets. Everyone's scared, which a lot of people are at the moment. 
uh, and particularly if it's when it's really boring is even better you know because it will be boring for usually quite some time and no one else is thinking about it and when you get in at those kind of prices the really low prices that last for months and maybe even sort of a year before you see really any uptrend you'll have built such a good stack that when it does move up you'll see unbelievable profits but again it's not financial advice continuing on the mining rig manufacturer Canaan, hopefully I said that right, saw steady profits during Q1 after reporting its unaudited first quarter 2021 financial results on Tuesday. And Canaan noted that it expects to at least sustain current profits or rise above to roughly 150 to 250 million uh, in revenue for quarter two alone. So quarter two's just getting ready to sort of finish now. So uh, very, very interesting. All right, Kraken, again, things, they're, they're building, it's happening. This is not getting smaller. The correction has shaken out the weak hands. And again, you know, fluctuations to the upside and the downside. There's going to be fake outs both ways. That won't surprise me at all. Kraken's mobile application will be available to US-based users. So again, that doesn't happen when things are kind of dying down when things are dying down they focus on a lot of new projects that they want to have ready for when things start to pick up again because this is coming out now it's because things are still heating up they're not on the downward slide now the skyrocketing demand towards cryptocurrency assets has pushed the veteran US exchange Kraken to release a mobile application in the country again they've kind of been forced into it it's growing so fast and mobile phones you know they're the world these days everyone needs one got to have an app so that again tells you how things are probably more than likely bullish over at least the midterm uh sort of short to midterm again the well that's hard to say because the long term i'm super bullish on crypto full stop but again the bear market cycles if you haven't been through one they are super brutal. They really, really, you know, you're going to want to panic sell and all the rest of it. And if you do, you know, that's fine. It's not the worst thing in the world. But as I've said a number of times for me, I've just held through and it's uh, done all right for me. But definitely take some profits when you can so you can take advantage of the big dips. Moving on. All right, Kyber Network. So I put a tweet out the other day that, you know, what are the coins that you know did really really well initially and then haven't done so well since uh synthetics network was the one for me it you know was my biggest gainer uh, and i just continued uh to buy right through to the top and so it's dumped a lot but you know the majority of my tokens were bought at really really good prices uh but it hasn't done much in quite some time and kyber network is exactly the same they did really really well initially and then just not sort of much has happened but you know there's a lot of stuff happening on Kyber Network at the moment. So the decentralized exchange Kyber Networks token is rallying hard, so up 20% uh, amid a dull uh, action in the broader market. Now, I did go on to say here that the new Kyber uh, dynamic market maker aimed to bring greater flexibility and high capital efficiency when it went live in April. So it's got an interesting gas situation. When things are really hectic, their gas prices will go up. Uh, but when things are really, really slow and nothing's happening, their fees go low. So, you know, we just want low fees full stop. And don't get me wrong, once, uh, you know, Ethereum 2.0 and all the rest of it come out, their fees are going to be low in general in comparison. But I do like the idea of their gas thing in a way when it's obviously super busy, then they want to try and uh, slow things down. Uh, a little bit that's probably a bad way of saying it but anyway their fee structure will kind of help stabilize things in the kyber network market anyway you know when it's getting overheated it'll slow it down a little bit and when it's when basically nothing's happening it's going to be super cheap to get on there and so that will hopefully keep it keep it steady uh and you won't have the kind of as big a fluctuations but look fluctuations is you know what also causes uh, causes crypto to be so much fun you know not when it's to the downside but to the upside for sure all right moving on so cardano uh is going to launch its first cross-chain bridge with uh, a link to nervos now there was talk of litecoin as well so still waiting to see what's happening with that but this is the first one all right so the force bridge as it's known will allow users to interchange and transact with nervos or cardano's native currencies 
So it will also enable participants to create their own wrap tokens, cryptos that are pegged to the value of, the, of another, uh, and do so across both chains. Uh, now this is according to the release. So again, this is that interoperability, it's gonna be so big. Uh, and you know, Adam something I'm gonna have a look at. It's been really quiet for a while and they really are about interoperability. So I, I think I need to get some more of that, Adam. I've heard some good stuff uh, that I may uh, get onto in the not too distant future. Now the bridge is expected to reduce transaction costs across both platforms, so that's good. Cryptocurrencies, while reducing the burden for users to possess different wallets to access features from both networks. Again, this is really, really good. It will let developers from both chains access services and features to expand their decentralized applications uh, and user base. So again, this is you know more super bullish news for Cardano and also for uh, Nervos as well. More big news, so the world's 43rd largest bank wants a piece of the $1.7 trillion cryptocurrency market. Again, this was a two point sort of five, I think two point, we got around 2.6, maybe $2.7 trillion. So it's down substantially. And that just tells you how much, you know, the gains we can still go from here. That's just to get back to the old all time high, let alone where we go from there. Because generally markets trade up. There's periods where they trade down, but over time, they generally sort of go up. So yeah, bullish. Now going on, British banking giant Standard Chartered is leaping into the crypto industry. The bank's Innovation and Ventures Unit, SC Ventures, is collaborating with an Asian partner to launch a digital asset brokerage and exchange platform for its institutional and corporate clients in the UK and Europe. That's not gonna happen if there's not the demand for it, and particularly institutions. So they're probably not going to you know, bring out too much news uh, at the moment of you know, big massive buys, they're gonna sort of dollar cost average in, and it's not until they've kind of built their position It'll be after that that they'll go. The, the news will come out. You know, like Tesla, they didn't say they were going to buy one point five billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. They said they had, and it wasn't just in one big massive foul swoop. It was done over time, and they just kept buying the lows, buying the lows, buying the lows, bit by bit. So it didn't massively pump the price, and then that news comes out. So that's why I'm more than happy if things just trade sideways for a while because I'm going to do the same. I'm just going to keep buying, keep buying and keep buying. And so when it really does get ready to pump, then, you know, hopefully I've made some really good decisions and then I can start to take advantage of those sort of massive pumps. But look, there's no guarantees in life that that's exactly what happens. But hopefully, fingers crossed. And, you know, hopefully it works out for everyone else uh, listening to my channel as well. All right, last but not least... So Pepe the Frog, everyone's seen this kind of image before. The frog has reclaimed, has been reclaimed by its creator and is being made into an NFT. So everything else is a bootleg, says Matt Fury, the man inspired uh, by bootleg. So again, Pepe the Frog creator Matt Fury is releasing a series of NFTs featuring the famous critter. So again, I really like the NFT space. I think it's going to be massive. You know, again, I don't know enough about the art to specifically buy NFTs, but I know enough about the space to go and buy the platforms that they're being built on. So again, for me, like I said, Engine, I've got a good uh, portfolio in Engine. I have bought some Super Farm. I have bought some Audius. Uh, yeah, they're the kind of things, you know, I might have to look at getting myself some more Decentraland and those kind of spaces and things like that, or some Decentraland, I had some sold it and now I might have to look at getting back in. I still think that is going to be a massive, massive space. But overall, I think DeFi is where I really want to, I mean, I have, you know, out of all the altcoin sort of categories, my DeFi portfolio is bigger than the rest other than Bitcoin and Ethereum, which just by far completely outweigh anything else. You know, Ethereum and Bitcoin make up 60 to nearly 70% of my portfolio. Uh, and then I've got about sort of 30% of a whole stack of different Altcoins, but again, in those spaces, so some layer two stuff, I've definitely looked at that. Some other layer one stuff as well. So, again, things like uh, Adam Cardano, um, you know, those kind of platforms. And then it's broken up between DeFi uh, and NFTs because I think that really is kind of the space. But also some supply chain, like I've got a, a decent amount of V chain, but you know, in percentage of my total, total portfolio, it's very small. Uh, but 
yeah those are the things I really like and that's what I'm really looking for so my question for you today is if the market basically just travels sideways for the next sort of you know few weeks to maybe a month or two are you still going to be buying or are you only in it you know for when it's basically pumping which unfortunately uh, is the worst time for you to really jump on board when it's dumped a whole lot is when you generally want to get in and not financial advice personal advice and when it's traveling sideways when it's boring and everyone's like nah there's nothing going on there why would you invest in that <laughs> that's where the smart money make the money and they make the money and I called the smart money because of those when it starts to pump they just dollar cost average sort of out of things or at least what they're happy to sell and when it's you know dumped and then has got to the hopefully the bottom it doesn't have to be exactly thereabouts and it gets boring and everyone says nah it's dead it's going to zero they're piling back into it and waiting to sell to people when it starts to pump and unfortunately that's the human psychology we want to buy when it's green and going crazy so again what's going on uh, anyway we want to buy when it's green and going crazy doing things like this and we don't want to touch it when it's doing things like this all right that's it from me if you can do me one favor please go ahead and smash that like button i'd really appreciate that helps my videos get uh you know seen by more people and again let me know are you going to buy if it just goes sideways and it's boring or you're only getting in when it starts to pump all right stay safe Till next time, hopefully you're on that gain train. It's a little bit up at the moment, which is good. And I'll see you next time.